Hey guys, and welcome to part one of building an architectural model of a shed at one tenth scale using balsa wood. And so today we're going to be building our first wood frame. And so you can see the measurements here. This is what the end result is going to look like. And so when we're building this, our bottom and our top plate are both going to be eight inches. All of our studs are going to be at seven and three quarters of an inch. And then the spacing between the studs is going to be between one and five sixteenths and one and three eighths of an inch. And I'll show you how we're going to do that with using our ruler. So the tools that you guys are going to need today are a pen or a pencil, a pair of scissors or a craft knife. If you have your parents permission, a stir stick, the small bottle of glue, and then you're going to need nine pieces of balsa wood. And so we're going to be cutting these at these different lengths. So we're going to need seven studs that are cut at seven and three quarters. We'll need a top plate and a bottom plate, both cut at eight inches. Okay. So I have six of my studs here. They have already been cut at seven and three quarters of an inch. And so what I'm going to do for you in this video is I'm going to cut one more, one more top or bottom plate and I'm going to cut one more stud. So we have our stud at eight inches. So if we use our ruler right here and we look at the length, we're going to put it here and you can see that we're, we're right at eight inches right here on our ruler. And each one of these studs is at seven and three quarters of an inch. Now make sure that you guys understand what three quarters of an inch is. I'm going to zoom it in here. Okay. And so we're looking at seven. This is a half inch right here. And then we're looking at three quarters of an inch. So if we look at our ruler right here, seven and three quarters of an inch is right here. Okay. Three quarters of an inch. So you might want to make a little mark there on your ruler. If you can, if you have a little marker, maybe you have a marker that you're able to use a Sharpie or something. And so I have a Sharpie right here and I'm going to mark that just to make it easier as we're making our marks. So seven and three quarters of an inch. I'm just going to put a little mark right here, darken that in, right? So that's my seven and three quarter inch mark right here. You can see that we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 tick marks on our 16th of an inch ruler, right? So one, seven and three quarters of an inch. Okay. So now that we've got our measurements out of the way, let us start measuring our last two pieces. Okay. So we got our bottom plate right here. We got all our studs that are ready to be placed here, right? And we'll place those in a second. I'm going to cut out my, my top plate since I already have my bottom plate cut. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to eight inches. I'm marking it off with my pen or pencil. And then using my pair of scissors, I'm just going to cut that off. And you're going to see how easy that cuts. So like I said, you can use a pair of scissors or you can use a craft knife and you can see that that cut is even on the top. So that's going to be my top plate. And now I'm going to cut that last stud for you guys, just to show you how we're doing it. So making sure that we are lined up here, not with the very end of the ruler, but where the, where the mark is for the end of your ruler, where the measurements line starts. And then we are going at seven and three quarters of an inch. Remember we made that mark here using our Sharpie. Now I'm marking that off seven and three quarters of an inch. What that represents is the seven foot nine inch stud that we would normally use on an eight foot on an eight foot stud wall. Okay. So if we, if we do the conversions of nine inches, nine divided by 12 comes out to 0.75 and then that, of course, converts to three quarters of an inch. So now we have all our studs done. And so now I'm going to move my paper out of the way and I'm going to start assembling my wall. And so I'm starting with my bottom plate. And so for, to start off, I would say have a piece of, a piece of cardboard or a cutting mat like this. And I'm going to tape my bottom plate down. Okay. So I'm going to take my bottom plate to my cutting board. 
That's going to make it a lot easier. I'm going to make sure that bottom plate is nice and straight. That's going to make it a lot easier to glue our studs once we start gluing. Okay, so my bottom plate is nice and secure now. Okay, and now I'm going to start from one end and I'm going to start pushing them up. Okay, and so we got our this is our other eight inch piece. Let's see what we got here. All right. All right, so now we're gonna start gluing our pieces on, right? We're making sure that all our pieces are even. This is the first thing you wanna do. Make sure that all your pieces are even, both on the top and the bottom, okay? And now we're gonna start spreading them out. And remember what our measurement is for our spacing. It's going to be between one and five sixteenths and one and three eighths. So we're bringing our ruler back over here, okay? And so what that mark is going to be, so this is 3 8 this is 5 16 right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Sharpie, and I'm going to put a little mark in between right there, showing that's where I'm going to be measuring. So it's between the 5 16 and between the 3 8 inch mark, I'm going to put a mark in between them showing where my measurement is going to be. Okay, and the reason why I came up with that is because we're doing 16 inch on center spacing. We're doing it at 1 tenth scale. And so when you do 1 tenth scale using a 16th of an inch ruler, that is the measurement that you have to use. So we're using the measurement between the 5 sixteenths and the 3 eighths inch mark. I'm just going to mark my bottom plate just like we would do. just like we would do on a normal wall. We're gonna mark our bottom plate, making sure that all our spacing is correct, right? And we don't have to mark that last one, okay? And so what you may have to do, and what I'm gonna to have to do right now is I'm gonna to have to move my tape line because one of my studs needs to get glued there. Okay, and so I'm going to move this over. Not a big deal. Because I moved that, I'm just going to remeasure real quick. Make sure that we're good to go. Okay, so now each one of those lines is where I'm putting a stud. I'm going to start on the end, on the end, okay? Making sure that my tape is very secure. If you need to, you can add additional tape, and I'm going to add a couple more pieces on here just to make sure that this bottom stud is not going to move. That's going to be very important that the bottom stud doesn't move, and then once we place that top stud, that it doesn't move either. Okay, so we're taping it. If you have cardboard at home, you're taping it to your cardboard. If you have one of these craft sheets, you can craft, uh, tape it to the craft sheet. Okay, now for the glue. It has a nozzle. We're not going to use the nozzle, okay, because that's just going to make a mess. And so to conserve our resources and to make sure we're not making messes, what we're doing is we're just dipping just the end, right? So we're just going to dip just the end, making sure that the end is completely covered. We're not going to dip it all the way in, okay? We're just going to dip the end, and we're going to do that on both sides. Okay? Okay. Now, once you have both sides dipped in, you're going to place your stud on your bottom plate. And then you're going to move your other pieces out of the way. And you're also going to place your stud on the top plate. Okay. Hold them together for a few seconds. Now we're ready for the next one. Okay, same thing. Start with the next stud. Dip it in. Dip it in, right? So we got that nice and covered. Now we're placing it in the center of our mark. As close to the center as possible. Of course, this is a scale model, right? So it's not gonna be exact. 
and then we're holding it on our top plate as well. So we're making sure our, our stud is straight, pushing it down on both sides, right? And so now that once you get that second one on, you're going to get another piece of tape and you're going to push your top plate in and then while you're holding it in, you're going to tape that into place, okay? And now what, what's that doing is it's holding that top plate as tight against those studs as possible so that way the glue dries nice and straight, okay? And so now we're just going to continue down. And so remember, our goal per class period or that we're doing is going to be a frame per class period, okay? For this model that we're going to be building, we're going to be doing three of these standard frames, and then we're going to be doing a door frame, which is going to be the more complex one. Okay. So we're not going to be doing a window frame on this model. Window frames a little bit more complex, takes a little bit more time. And so we're trying to make this as easy for you guys as possible while still understanding framing, right? So you guys have built this frame. You've designed this frame in Google SketchUp. So this should be very familiar to you. Nothing that we're talking about right now should be new. You should be understanding what a stud is, what the top plate is, what the bottom plate is, right? And it should be very simple for you to understand why we're putting this together, why we have the 16 inch spacing, right? Standard 16 inch spacing here in the United States. Okay, and so now we're going to continue on. And we're just adding some glue on here. I'm going to dip it in. And so you after a couple times, you're going to see that it gets easier, right? So you shouldn't have so much glue, but there should be enough glue where the entire piece is covered but not totally drenched right we don't want that we don't want it to be totally drenched making huge messes all right two more left that's all we got two more left for this first one and then we are done with our first frame okay we are going to do a couple more little things on here and i'm going to show you how to how to finish it up but you guys should be getting this pretty good should be understanding. Now I'm using this green glue. If you guys have the blue glue, it's the same exact thing. Okay, it's the same exact glue. This is special glue that's made to be used with the balsa wood. And remember, the balsa wood that you guys have is what you have, right? So if you make if you start making mistakes, make sure that you don't make too many mistakes because you have just enough to make the entire shed with the roof, right? So with the roof, you have just enough balsa wood to make the entire shed and roof, okay? And so now what we're gonna do is, on, once we get done with that other side, we're gonna get another piece of tape, okay? And then while holding that together, pushing it in, we're gonna tape that other side down as well, okay? And so we're taping that down. And what that's, what that's going to do is it's going to keep it nice, a lot of pressure on our pieces, right? And so that way they glue nice and clean. Okay, so I do have one extra little piece here. And this, what I use this stick right here for is once I'm done, you can see that some of our little pieces of balsa would have a little bit of spacing. I'm going to put a little bit of glue here and I'm going to go over our joints, okay? I'm going to go over our joints, putting that little bit of extra glue so when it dries, it's nice and strong, right? And so you don't have to do it on all your joints, but if there are joints that you can see that have a little bit of spacing, I like to do it on all of them, but you don't have to do that. I would suggest making sure that you do do it on any joints that have some spacing. Like up here, you definitely can see that there's some spacing here. And so I'm going to put a little bit of glue there and just put it into place, making sure that it's good. Now, once I put a little glue there, I am going to push it in a little bit and then make sure that that tape is putting pressure on that top plate to the stud. 
And one last one here, and I think we will be good to go. Okay, so let's put a little bit of a little bit of glue, and you can see this one had a little extra space right here. And so when I push this in, make sure that tape is holding it nice and tight, and then boom. Okay, so we have our frame, right? Our wall frame. This is the standard eight foot wall frame at one tenth scale. So every foot of wall frame is now converted to inches. Remember, our standard studs are going to be seven and three quarters of an inch. Our top plate and our bottom plate are at eight inches. And then our spacing between each, each stud is spaced at the number between five eighths, five sixteenths, sorry, five sixteenths and three eighths. So right here between five sixteenths, let's see if we can get a better view between five sixteenths and three eighths. And I put a mark on my ruler and that is what I'm using to space my studs. And you can see that the center, the spacing is accurate. Okay. It is accurate. It's even across all the way. Okay, guys, I hope that video helps you out. If you have questions, let me know. Make sure that once you are done, you let this dry before you take the tape off, okay? It may be stuck a little bit to your cardboard or to your surface, but as long as you give it about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to dry, once you take it off, it should not come apart. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you soon.